Good morning. Welcome to another edition. Let me adjust this here. Another edition of Take 5. And I am so excited. This is a milestone. We are starting a brand new book. We are in Mark chapter 1. And today we get to start talking about absolutely other than Jesus. If you ask who is my role model, who is my favorite person in the Bible, it's this guy, John the Baptist. And so we are going to be talking about him this morning. Because we have to talk about John before we talk about Jesus. But we are in Mark chapter 1 verse 1. Beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Son of God. Amen. Just get right, get that cleared up right off the bat. Verse 2. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet. Behold, I send my messenger before your face. Who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Now I'm going to stop right there. And this, this is a little controversial, but it shouldn't be, because it's pretty clear. It says John was baptizing, and it says it was a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And we don't really see baptism in the Old Testament. So the first time we see baptism is when John the Baptist is doing it, and it's a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And baptism comes from the Greek word baptizo, which means to immerse, to dip, to plunge. So he was dipping people into the water and they were coming out of the water that's why he was out by the Jordan River and we haven't read that part yet but that's where he was he was out in the wilderness baptizing them in the Jordan River but it was of repentance for the forgiveness of sins now that's why John baptized well how about everybody else when everybody else baptized did they was it for the same reason? Well, here's the thing you got to remember. If you if you see something in the Bible, the first time you see it, that establishes the pattern. And unless it's changed, it, it stays that way. But let's just check out, just to see if it changed. If you go to Acts chapter 2, I don't do this very often, jump around, but I just, just need to quickly make this point here about baptism, because there's a lot of teaching about baptism that's not quite correct. If you look at Acts chapter 2, after Peter, on the day of Pentecost, preaches the gospel, he talks about how uh, Jesus came and we crucified him and uh, and yet he was raised from the dead. And uh, the, Peter, the people there are wondering what they need to do. Peter says this in verse 38. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we see there that baptism was of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Now we had two things added there. It was in the name of Jesus Christ and that you would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Those things weren't yet possible when John was baptizing and yet the purpose of baptism was still the same. It, it was to show that you have repented of your sins and to have your sins forgiven. Now, I know there are some who would argue that your sins are forgiven at repentance and baptism is the symbol of, that shows that otherwise. And I don't want to get in big debates with you, okay? But I'm just telling you the way I read it, and I, and I, I could be wrong, I admit that, but the way I read it, is it says baptism for the forgiveness of sins so since that's the way I read it that's the way I'm going to apply it and on October 25th 1981 I repented of my sins and I was baptized for the forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus and I believe I received the Holy Spirit that day if you want to disagree that's fine there are numerous numerous passages on baptism I would encourage you to study all of them and I know a lot of you have, and you come to a different conclusion than I do, but I've got to teach it the way I, I read it. So, anyway, 
Hopefully that helped you. And let's just say this, too. If you've never been baptized at all, uh, I don't really get that. Even if we disagree on the, on the absolute specifics of it, John baptized all the time. Jesus baptized. Didn't baptize as much as John, but he did baptize. Peter baptized. Paul baptized. We see baptism all through uh, the New Testament. So if you've never been baptized, I would seriously question, okay, not trying to judge anybody, I would seriously question whether you actually ever became a Christian. All right, I say that out of love, not out of judgment. I hope it came across that way. Hey, come back tomorrow. we got more to say about John the Baptist on the next edition of Take 5.